Hi everyone. Thanks for being here. Today's video, Pyramid Dice. You know, it's been a while since my last video and I would have had this one ready for you sooner, but I really wanted to take my time with it. I'm really, really excited about this game. And so I had many friends and family members play the game and I made a lot of tweaks based on their feedback. So without further ado, here we go. So uh, this game is for two or more players. Um, you'll need six six-sided dice, as you can see down here in the corner of your screen. Um, a dice cup is optional, and I've got some links uh, to different apps that can do the job for you. However, if you are a Google user and you have a Google account, um, I have a handy-dandy spreadsheet here that's going to do all the scoring for you. I know this looks like a lot over here. Uh, these are the different rounds, and then each player has their own sheet color-coded. But basically in round one, if you complete your pyramid in one roll, and again, we're going to get into that, but if you get the 15 points for that, and let's say you uh, they're all four, fives, and sixes, and let's say they're all consecutive, which would also mean that they are connected. So you simply put in your uh, points for the round, and not only will it tabulate your round score, but as you work your way through the rounds, it'll keep track of your total as well. So this is a nice little tool that I put together that I'm going to use moving forward when I play this game. Uh, it's a nice visual to see all the ways you can score, and then a nicer way to keep track of score rather than paper and pencil. If you're playing remotely, uh, you could always just share this screen uh, over Zoom or uh, if you use a different app so that everyone can see the scores. All right, let's get into it. The object of the game is to be the first uh, to equal or surpass the target score by building a pyramid and earning points. Feel free to set your own target score, but make sure everyone agrees on one before the game begins. Now, this isn't like Yahtzee where there's a set number of turns, so it's going to be the first one to equal or eclipse whatever you decide you're going for. So I put a little chart here together of just a recommended um, target score, depending on how many players and the length of game that you would be interested in. Two players, it's going to go pretty quick, so the, the uh, totals are higher. Three to four, if you want to do a quick one, you can bring the point total down and so forth. Now, the thing about building your pyramid is that the first level is a single dice. The second level is then a pair. And the third level then needs to be a three of a kind. And I don't have a pair or a three of a kind there. Now I fixed it. And of course, the caveat here is that you may not use the same number for multiple levels of the pyramid. So if your top level is the number one, then you cannot have your bottom level be ones. So each level or layer or however you want to look at it has to be a different number. Now, when it comes to the rules, if you roll a three of a kind, you are required to keep that three of a kind. And if you roll pairs, you're required to keep all of your pairs. Now, of course, if you roll three pairs, you're not going to keep all three because you can't build a pyramid. So you're required to keep two. And if you roll a double three of a kind, keep one. You can choose to keep a single dice at any time. But the moment you reserve a dice and choose not to re-roll it, you can't pick it up later and roll it again. So everyone's going to roll. Highest number goes first. If two or more players tie, those players roll again. And then you just go around clockwise. So okay. earning points, there's a couple of special circumstances. Again, when your pyramid is built, then you uh, qualify for earning points. Now, uh, first special circumstance is this. If you don't have any pairs on your first roll, in other words, you roll the one through six straight, then you get 20 points and your turn is over. That's actually not a bad point total for one to uh, one roll. If you get six of a kind in the first roll, I don't know what the odds are, but not great. Uh, that's an instant win. So it doesn't matter if you're at the beginning of the game, middle or end, you win the game if you roll six of a kind. But again, that must be in your first roll. If you can't build a pyramid in four rolls, here's another special circumstance. You get four rolls. If you can't do it in four rolls, not only do you earn zero points, but whoever rolls next, their turn is doubled. So if on the uh, following player's roll, they get a 15, that's actually worth 30. And there is a spot for that right here 
So you put in all of your points, and if it's a double around, put in uh, the total of whatever it says up here, and it'll double it and transfer it over there. Now, um, if you only earn one point, and that can only happen if you complete your pyramid in four rolls and none of the other points apply. But if you do that, you can keep your one point or you can hit the reset button and start your turn over again. All right. So you can earn points through rolls, a number of rolls, and then you can earn points through different scenarios. If you complete your three, two, one pyramid in one roll, that's 15, two rolls is five, three rolls is three, four rolls is one. And again, if you can't get out after four rolls, you get a zero and the next player gets to double that round's score. Now here's some different scenarios and other ways to pick up points after you've built your pyramid. Are all of the numbers connected? So they would not have to be in a row, but connected. So let's say I have a, a five on my first, uh, four on my second layer, and six. Four, five, and six are connected. They're not sequential. They're not in order, but they're connected. That's worth three points. If you add them all up and you get a prime number, I've given you the prime numbers here, that's five. If they're all odd or even, that's five. If they're all low or high, this would be a, uh, an example of high. Four, five, six is all the highest numbers. Or if they're all low, that's worth five. If they're all in ascending or descending order, so for example, three, five, six is all in ascending order if you look at your pyramid from the top. Five is higher than three. Six is higher than five. Uh, or if they're all consecutive. So here you've got four, five, six. They're in a row. So if this was your roll, you'd get connected, right? So you get those three points. You would get uh, all highest. So you get those five. You'd get ascending, descending. You'd get consecutive. So you can, this is all that apply here. Okay, now if your single dice equals your pair, so if I have a four up here and these happen to be twos, that's worth five points. If your single dice is greater than your three of a kind, you can see why that's worth more points. That's hard to do. You'd have to have maybe a five or a six up here and then three ones. Uh, if your single dice is greater than your three of a kind, that would be 10. Now, if your pair equals your three of a kind, so these two equal those three, that is worth 10. If your single dice equals your three of a kind, that's very rare, that's worth 20. And then last but not least, if your single dice and your pair equal your three of a kind, that is worth 20 points. So that's how you score. So now I'm gonna switch over to my scorekeeper sheet and we're gonna play around here, see what happens. Thank you guys all very much for joining me today. I appreciate you being here. All right, you can see I have a three of a kind, which I must keep. And I can choose to keep a three, a five, or a six. But once I make that decision, I can't pick it up again later. So I'm going to pick all three of these up here. And I, I really need a pair with no ones and no more three of a kinds. Here's roll two. And that's another one. So I'm going to scoop again. Roll three. Three, four, five. Decisions, decisions. I'm going to keep my three and my five. Why not? This is my last chance. If I don't uh, uh, score here, my score is a zero for the round. And then whoever my opponent was, they would get to double their next round score. Oh, I got it. That was some luck right there. Now, you might be thinking, okay, you got out in four. Look over here now. So that's only worth one point. Why are you so excited? Well, because I've got other things happening here. So let's take a look and see if we're primed. 5 and 6 is 11, and 111 one, one is 14. That's not prime. They are all odd, so I'm going to enter 5 points for that. They are also uh, ascending or descending, 5, 3, 1. They're all going down, so that's worth 5 points. And then we continue. Um, they're not consecutive. My single dice does not equal, so you, you keep going down. But what you can see here is that my single dice is higher than my three of a kind. So that's going to be worth 10 points. And I believe that's where my scoring for this round is going to end. As you work your way down the scorecard, you can see here that nothing else applies. So uh, round number one here, uh, you can see I earned 21 points. And that comes over here to the grand total. And as I would uh, do more rounds, 
uh, that grand total would continue to climb. If I was playing with one person and we wanted to play a long game, we might be playing to 200. That is up to the players to decide. Well, thanks for joining me. Do all the things all the other YouTubers ask you to do when it comes to their channel. And you guys, take care.